People in northeastern Japan have spent nearly two years getting over what they lost and in getting back on their feet. Next Monday marks the second anniversary of the earthquake, tsunami and nuclear accident. The disaster killed nearly 16,000 people. About 2,700 others are still listed as missing. People across the northeast are moving forward on a path to recovery. They've worked to rebuild their homes, their communities and their lives. We'll be spending the lead up to March the 11th looking at how far they've come and the challenges that still lie ahead. And perhaps the biggest one is the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. Areas around the facility shown here in red are still off limits. About 160,000 people from Fukushima prefecture are still unable to go home. The earthquake and tsunami triggered a total blackout at Fukushima Daiichi. Workers with Tokyo Electric Power Company were unable to keep the fuel inside the reactors cool. Meltdowns happened inside three of the facility's six reactors. The temperature of the fuel continued to rise. Hydrogen built up and sparked explosions. The blast damaged reactor buildings and released massive amounts of radiation into the environment. Two years on, TEPCO officials say the situation is stable. According to the man burdened with the task of shielding the public from the horrors all around us, they say water circulation systems are keeping the nuclear fuel cool. And they say the plant is no longer releasing significant amounts of radioactive materials. Crews will one day dismantle and decommission the four crippled reactors. Japanese leaders have announced the entire operation could take up to 40 years, but TEPCO engineers admit they have no firm timeline and no firm plan for moving the molten fuel. But TEPCO engineers admit they have no firm timeline and no firm plan for moving the molten fuel. NHK World's Yoichiro Tatewa spoke with the utility's top official in charge of nuclear power. Delivered by a man whose job it is to protect us from the truth. Akira Kawano has been an engineer at TEPCO for almost 30 years. He was in charge of safety at Fukushima Daiichi before the accident. Now he supervised the decommissioning process. What do you think the, the most difficult part, the difficult element uh, concerning the decommissioning process? Two <coughs> difficult challenges. Um, the one is uh, um, how to understand the inside the uh, reactor pressure vessel and the primary containment vessel. And to remove the uh, molten fuel debris from the unit one through three. The other challenge uh, is that uh, how to <coughs> cope with uh, waste. It's a liquid waste and uh, solid waste. Uh, how to treat them and how to s safely store it uh, for the long time. Was that an intelligent report? I'm confused because it seemed to be saying, we don't know. Gee, I could write that report. TEPCO engineers are still trying to understand the situation inside the reactors. They're using fiber optic scopes and closed circuit cameras to gather images of the damage. They're also using computer simulations to determine the condition of the molten fuel. But high levels of radiation are slowing things down. Walkers can only go into reactor buildings for 5 to 10 minutes at a time. We haven't understood well uh, how those uh, uh, molten fuel debris are distributed and located. We need to uh, sample the debris and uh, we need to understand the mechanical character characteristics and chemical characteristics of the debris. So otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot develop the uh, necessary tool to remove, re retrieve the debris. I hope we'd like to understand some, something about it uh, within a couple of years. It, it takes a long time to... to uh, it's just it's a difficult to uh, achieve it getting very impatient with you and your ridiculous snake claims look at my eyebrows can't you tell i'm ready to kill you can we really say that the uh, decommissioning process will end 
within 40 years. It's very difficult to talk about uh, uh, such a far future, but uh, it's really the, uh, takes a time, actually. So even just for the removal of the debris, and it takes uh, 10 years or more, I think. And you know the uh, half-life of the, the, for example, the cesium is uh, 30 years, so at some part of the decommissioning we need to wait. <laughs> the radiation will be reduced. There are different ways to decommission a nuclear plant, but they all involve risks. Given the state of Fukushima Daiichi, Kawano and his team need to account for unprecedented challenges when they choose options. He believes TEPCO executives will have to discuss it with stakeholders and explain the risks of the options before they decide what course of action they should take. We really need to uh, improve our capability of the risk communication in future. That's uh, also our challenge. <laughs> Regarding also the decommissioning, so we need to share that information. Another major issue, as Kawano mentioned, is the toxic waste on site at Fukushima Daiichi. Every day, 400 tons of groundwater seeps into the highly radioactive units. Engineers pump it from buildings and into special tanks. They're in a constant race to build enough storage capacity to prevent any leaks into the environment. It's really impossible just to continuously accumulate that water in the tank. It's not a reasonable way. So we need to think about the possibility of discharge or the other alternative ways, like uh, evaporation or something like that. TEPCO engineers are planning to introduce a new device they say it's capable of removing all radioactive isotopes from the water. Okay. Kawano says the manager needs to talk to local residents in order to decide how to resolve this problem. Early reactions say the man who would say this whether or not it was true and has access to terrifying secrets that we don't succeeded at setting the tone for his second term. Looking ahead, Engineers have started updating the decommissioning roadmap. The government pledged the entire process would take 40 years. Right now, there is no concrete plan in place to fit that timeline. This is a time for the country to come together. I mean, I thought he did a great job of sheltering both Democrats and Republicans from the cold reality of our situation. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World. Workers at a Japanese electronics company have high hopes for their newest robot. It's capable of removing radioactive substances from inside nuclear reactor plants. Delivered by a man whose job it is to protect us from the truth. They want to send it into the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant this summer. The one meter tall remote controlled robot can wash radioactive materials from walls and floors using high powered water jets. The water travels at several hundred times the pressure of tap water. The removed substances are sucked up by a vacuum at the tip of the robot's arm. We hope our robot will improve the environment of the nuclear power plant and help with the recovery process. Workers from Tokyo Electric Power Company have been struggling to decommission the reactors. They can enter the reactor building for only short periods because of high levels of radiation. My favorite part was when everyone clapped. It was like something good was happening. Tens of thousands of people in Taiwan have demonstrated against construction of the country's fourth nuclear power plant, which is located near Taipei. <laughs> Protests took place on Saturday in four cities, including Taipei and Kaohsiung. The rallies were held to mark the second anniversary of the nuclear disaster in Fukushima, Japan, which has further raised concerns among residents. 
Police say about 50,000 protesters marched from the presidential office in Taipei. The protesters chanted, reject dangerous nuclear power plants and call for the suspension of the project. We should abolish the fourth plant and let Taiwan become nuclear free. Taiwan's fourth nuclear plant in New Taipei City has been hit by a series of problems since construction began in 1999. The project has been delayed by more than 10 years, partly because of a political dispute between the ruling and opposition parties. Taiwanese authorities are planning to hold a referendum on whether to continue construction of the country's fourth nuclear facility. Next up, North Korea has successfully conducted their third test into making a nuclear missile go... Japanese government officials are getting ready to tap natural gas called methane hydrate beneath the ocean floor for the first time ever in the world. The country is facing the rising cost of imported fuels, and the government is planning to start test drilling off Japan's Pacific coast as early as next week. Sources close to the project have told NHK that pipes for drilling are almost ready for installation. They say the gas field is located several hundred meters beneath the ocean floor, off the coast of Aichi Prefecture in central Japan. Methane hydrate is a type of natural gas that is formed from methane and water. The deposits in the area alone are estimated to be enough for covering the country's natural gas consumption for 14 years. It's another bullshit experiment. North Korean officials have denounced the new UN sanctions resolution directed at them, calling it a product of the U.S. hostile policy toward the country. It also hinted at further provocations such as nuclear tests and missile launches. The North Korean Foreign Ministry issued a statement on Saturday through the state media two days after the UN Security Council unanimously approved the tightened sanctions in response to its third nuclear test. It said the UN Security Council cooked up five sanctions resolutions against the North, but they only resulted in the country's bolstering of its nuclear deterrent both in quality and quantity. The statement went on to say that the world will clearly see how the country will reinforce itself as a permanent nuclear weapons state and satellite launcher as a result of these sanctions. North Korea has declared it will scrap the 1953 armistice that ended the Korean War and nullify its non-aggression agreements with South Korea as of Monday. On that day, the U.S. and South Korea are scheduled to begin the second joint military exercise this month. People in northeastern Japan have spent nearly two years getting over what they lost and in getting back on their feet. Next Monday marks the second anniversary of the earthquake, tsunami and nuclear accident. The disaster killed nearly 16,000 people. About 2,700 others are still listed as missing. People across the northeast are moving forward on a path to recovery. They've worked to rebuild their homes, their communities and their lives. We'll be spending the lead up to March the 11th looking at how far they've come and the challenges that still lie ahead. And perhaps the biggest one is the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. Areas around the facility shown here in red are still off limits. About 160,000 people from Fukushima Prefecture are still unable to go home. The earthquake and tsunami triggered a total blackout at Fukushima Daiichi. Workers with Tokyo